Alrighty folks, let's continue with Yarn Slingers. And it's my pleasure next to announce Nancy Diamond. Subterranean Sales, a job interview. The oddest job I ever had was a job I never worked. In fact, the oddest thing about the situation was the job interview. I was 18, just graduated from high school, and looking for a summer job. Scanning the classifieds for a job that would match my minimal skills, I came across the following. No experience necessary. Telephone solicitation. Good pay. Must have a pleasant voice. Apply in person. The job interview course I had taken in high school was mostly lecture. The bulk of it was learning how to shake hands, how to introduce yourself, how to write a resume. We learned how to dress for success and how to project confidence. These lessons were fresh in my mind as I rang the doorbell of a single family home at the address I had been given. A woman in a bathrobe and fuzzy slippers answered the door. So you're here for the telephone bit. Well, come in, we're in the basement. Without further ado, she escorted me down creaky wooden steps to the concrete cellar that served as the office. Who is it, Annie? Boomed a male voice from a hidden corner of the basement room. What's your name, dear? Annie asked me as we stood at the bottom of the steps. Nancy Diamond, I asserted with confidence. This here's Nancy Diamond, Liam. She's come about the ad in the paper. Well, show her to the telephones. Does she drink? <laughs> Do you drink, dear? She asked softly. Reading the uncertain shrug of my shoulders as a yes, she called back to Liam, make her a Roman Coke. I began politely to protest, but she waved me silent and led me to a seat beside a long table lined with black rotary telephones. The dried and stringy remains of fried chicken in takeout boxes, crushed paper cups, and crumpled napkins littered the table. Between the rows of phones sat a soup can full of pencils. A steno pad lay beside each telephone. Here you go, said Liam, walking into the light, holding two paper cups. He swept a few of the chicken boxes aside and set my drink on the table. As he pulled a chair up beside me, I observed that he, like Annie, who sat silently across the table from us, was middle-aged and very, very pale. His belly peeked out from under his dirty T-shirt, and his bright red hair was grease-combed into a 50s style pompadour. Leaning back in his seat, he crossed one leg over the other and rested his drink on his thigh. Have you ever done this kind of work before? He asked, clasping his hands behind his neck. Instead of looking at me, he became absorbed in moving his head first to the left and then to the right as if to relieve a stiffness. Well, I answered, nervously sipping at my illegal drink. I've talked on the telephone before, and I'm sure if you tell me what to say, I can sell your product over the phone. What is it you want me to sell, anyway? Grave plots, he answered, casually, as he craned his neck to the right. You see, my wife inherited a piece of land from her father who recently passed away. We haven't got enough money to build on the land and we don't want to be stuck paying taxes on a worthless piece of property. So I came up with the idea of turning the place into a cemetery. He stopped craning his neck and brought his hands forward to steady the cup on his leg. After all, he continued as he lifted the drink to his lips, Everybody's got to go. He wiped his mouth with his arm and reached over me to pick up a grease-stained sheet of paper. Now this here, he said, is the list of names you are to call. 
On this other paper is what you're supposed to say after they say hello. Why don't you just have a look at it and try to learn it by heart? I took the paper he handed me with the spiel on it and studied it carefully. It read, hello, my name is, say your name here. <laughs> I represent the Henwood Cemetery Company Incorporated and we are conducting a survey. I have just a few questions to ask you concerning your preference of interment. Would you mind helping us out? So far, so good, I thought, taking a sip of my rum and coke. The first question I have concerns your religious affiliation. Are you Catholic, Protestant, Jew, or none of the above? If they say Catholic or Jew, say thank you and goodbye. <laughs> now wait just a minute. No, this is where I turn the job down. But I'll finish my drink first. Have you or any of your family prepared for the future by purchasing a cemetery plot? If they say yes, ask them where, then say thank you and goodbye. No? Well, if you were forced through tragic circumstances to consider the need of a cemetery plot tomorrow, do you know which one you'd choose? Are you aware that thousands of people each day are compelled by the immediacy of their unexpected grief to choose resting places for their loved ones that those same loved ones would not have approved of? I sipped my rum and coke with an increasingly unquiet mind. Have you thought about what a relief it would be to your whole family to know that when their time comes, there is a peaceful grassy knoll ready to receive them. Don't be forced into buying a plot at the last moment. It's sensible, don't you agree, to make your plans ahead of time. I sipped harder on my drink, slightly panicked by the thought that there might already be bodies on the property. To aid you in your selection of a final resting place, the Henwood Cemetery Company Incorporated is cooperating in a special option that will make available to you not only peace of mind, but also financial savings. What we are offering for a limited time only is a chance to purchase two plots for the price of one. And how many bodies and whose? For only $200, we are willing to make available to you two adjoining plots on the site you choose yourself. Additional family lots are available at slightly higher prices. My fascination, no, my terrified imagination kept me reading to the end. Do you wish to make an appointment now? Make the appointment. If you wish, a representative can call on you at your home with more information. Make the appointment. Thank you very much. Goodbye. I gulped the last bit of my rum and coke and thought quickly as I rose unsteadily to my feet. I'm sorry, I said. I didn't expect to start working today and, and I promised to play my guitar and sing at our family reunion. I was supposed to be there at 10. Does anyone know what time it is? Well, look, said Liam from the bar where he was pouring himself another drink. You take the paper home with you. You can bring it back Monday morning. There will be lots of people here on Monday morning. Lots of people. He began to laugh at his unintended joke. Lots and lots of people and lots of lots to sell on Monday. I hurriedly crumpled my cup, tossing it onto the pile on the table. Script in hand, I smiled and waved as I retraced my steps back up the creaking stairs, finally closing the door on his laughter resounding from the depths. Lightheaded and relieved, I pointed my car toward home and thought, maybe this will make a good story someday. <laughs> Thank you.